Welcome to the Dinosaur George podcast, a show about paleontology and other earth sciences. Dinosaur George is a public speaker, author, and TV host with 30 years of study in paleontology. He has performed live in over 4,500 events across the US and Canada. Now, here is Dinosaur George. All right, everybody, good morning to you all. Happy Friday. Uh, before we get started with the class, and by the way, I see all of you. I finally figured out how to... Uh, hey, you're friends of Alex. Um, how good, Millie? How cool is that? Um, before we get started, let me go over a couple of the rules real quick. I won't anymore greet you. I see your messages coming through. Now, you may get responses, but that's probably going to be Michelle or it's going to be Alexis who may be responding to you during the show. I don't know. So if, if you get a response and you never saw me type, it's not that I'm magic. It's just that I have people who are out there helping me. Uh, real quick, let me uh, cover it. Like I said, I will not be responding to your good mornings, even though I'm seeing them. Good morning to you all. Uh, Alexis and Michelle have added some worksheets on the Dinosaur George Jr. page, the page that you're on if you're watching this live. You can download those and print those and use those for the end of the show. Also, we're going to be solving a mystery. And... That means that if I were you, I would have a pencil and paper nearby because I will be throwing out clues. And at the end of this class, we're going to be solving it. So you need to pay attention to this class. No sleeping in class, Alex. <laughs> All right. Uh, real quick, let's talk about the announcements. Here is the schedule for the upcoming weeks on April the 7th. That is a Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central Time, same time as all classes. We're doing a class on prehistoric mammals. Now, in that class, I'm going to have skulls. I'm going to have some really cool stuff to show you. I will show you some skulls of saber-toothed cats and some giant dogs, and uh, I might be able to fit a bear in here. But I'm going to show you some, and a killer bird. Ooh, I'll bring a killer bird skull. So I'm going to be showing you some really cool stuff. On April the 10th, it is a, show, a class dedicated to the king of the dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Nothing but T-Rex. When you get finished on April the 10th, that's a Friday, when you get finished with that class, you are going to be an expert on all things Tyrannosaurus Rex. And then on April the 14th, that is a Tuesday, I'm doing a class on adaptation, dinosaur adaptations. But included in that, I'm going to talk about modern animal adaptations to demonstrate to you how modern animals adapt to their environment, just like prehistoric animals. So in adaptation, I'll talk about how the animals uh, evolved to be able to eat a certain plant. How plants may have changed, how animals adapted to a changing environment, how animals adapted to new predators. So it's going to be a, a very fun class, and I think you will like it. Uh, real quickly, we are running a 15% off everything on the website sale. Unfortunately, we only ship in the U.S. I am so sorry for all of my friends overseas. I, I'm so sorry, but we just can't ship uh, outside of the U.S. But uh, in it, you get 15% off of anything, but you've got to put 15% uh, off of everything. But you have to make sure to put in the promo code Dino George, D I N O G E O R G E. Don't forget to put in that promo code, and all purchases at $25 or more is free shipping as well. So it's a great time. Now, from exciting, fun news, we're having something called pop up questions and answers, pop up QA. These are going to be fun. Periodically, with no schedule announced, I am going to pop up on this page just to answer and talk, answer your questions and talk to you. It is not a class. It is not a lesson. It's simply going to be for fun. So many of you want to ask questions, but unfortunately, I can't get to them all. And so um, this is going to be your opportunity. Now, to know when it's happening, we are going to give you a 30-minute notice. You're going to get a 30-minute warning. Warning. Pop-up Q&A coming in 30 minutes. You will get a 30-minute warning. That will give you time to grab a pencil and paper, write down all the questions you want to ask, and get ready. Because when I pop up, I don't know if I'm going to stay for five minutes, five hours, five days, or five years. It's probably not going to be five years because i got other stuff to do. But anyway, it could be five minutes. It could be 30 minutes. It could be an hour. I don't know. But in order to get notified, you need to, on the Dinosaur George Jr. page, you need to... 
uh, you need to sign up for all notifications. You want to get notified so that you know when it's coming. So sign up for notifications and get ready because these are going to be fun. It can happen anytime. I cannot tell you when, but when it does, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Now today's class is on forensic fossils. Now paleontologists use forensic science the way an investigator uses it to study clues. When paleontologists find the bones of a fo or the fossil of an animal, we can get a lot of information from those bones. The skeleton, of course, is the most important thing because the skeleton will tell the investigators how big the animal was, how much the animal might have weighed, how long the animal was, and most importantly, who the animal was. We have to know who it is. Well, looking at those bones, there's a lot of information there. People don't realize how much information can be found from bones. So like a crime scene, paleontologists show up and they look at the evidence to figure it out. Now, do you remember in one of my earlier classes when I taught you about time and how we look at the layers of earth? Well, that helps us help scientists figure out when the crime occurred. We know when the crime occurred by looking at that. Next, we look at other animals that we know lived during that same time. We find other fossils in the area to help us figure it out. We also look for plant fossils because they can help us figure out whether it was hot or cold, or was it a swamp, was it a desert? All of these things are important because they help us figure out how to solve the crime. So as our paleontologist, are using different methods to study, that's the same way that's, that uh, crime investigators study today. So we look at the bones, but you wanna know something else that we can look at to help us get clues about a particular animal? I know this sounds a little crazy, but we can look at poop. I said it, you're right, I said it, dinosaur poop. Now in science, we call that a coprolite. Coprolite is something that scientists can look at because sometimes they help us have insight into animals. For instance, we can cut the coprolite in very thin layers and look at the coprolite through magnification and we can see things inside of the coprolite. For instance, here are two pieces of fossilized poo. The one that has the two images, one on top of the other, those black things are pieces of bone of something the animal ate. Now, it doesn't always mean that we know who made the coprolite, who dung it. <laughs> that was hilarious. Who dung it? Write that down. Michelle, Alexis, write that down as the funniest thing I've ever said in my life. So <laughs> we can at least find out who got eaten. Now, you see the gray colored one on the other side? Take a look at that. Can anybody guess what that is inside of that piece of coprolite? Anybody want to guess what that is in there? That is a shark tooth. Something ate a shark, swallowed it, and swallowed its teeth. And it came out in the poo. So... <laughs> So we don't know who the animal was that did that, but that's an example of something that we can use as clues. Something else that the paleontologists look at are things like teeth, because teeth help us understand what an animal ate. Let's start with this tooth. This is an odd tooth. I'm going to hold it behind my hand because the black, dark, black backdrop makes it hard to see. What you are looking at is the tooth. Let's see if I can get my camera to focus. The tooth of a protoceratops. Boy, my camera's not working very well. I don't know what's going on with it. Uh, but um, you're looking at the tooth of a protoceratops. Now it's a very weird tooth. This real long piece, that is the root. If you looked in his mouth, all you would see is just the tooth itself. You wouldn't see the root. But scientists can look at this tooth and realize that this is a tooth that is made for chewing plants. And so by looking at this tooth, scientists know it was made for chewing plants. Now, here's another tooth. As you can very well see, this is not made for chewing plants. This is a tooth from a Carcharodontosaurus. 
Now, when a scientist sees this tooth, they know this is a meat eater. And you see, when this animal bites on the bone of something, it can leave a mark and scientists can figure out what kind of animal made it. This is a tooth from Carcharodontosaurus. This is a tooth from Tyrannosaurus rex. Now, Carcharodontosaurus's teeth are made for slicing. T-Rex's teeth are round. When they bite, it leaves a round hole, not a slice. When this animal bites into bone, it leaves a slice. When Tyrannosaurus rex bites into a bone, its teeth are round. They're not thin. Look how thick it is compared to this. The difference between it, because these teeth are made for chewing bone. We're going to discuss that during the class that I do on Tyrannosaurus rex. So, scientists can use bones to help them figure out the clues. Well, let me give you another example of how bones can help us understand what's going on with an animal. This is a vertebra. Vertebra is a fancy word for a bone. A backbone or a tailbone or a neck bone. Uh, dinosaurs have neck vertebra, back vertebra, hip vertebra, and tail vertebra. So, uh, you can also pronounce it vertebrae, which I think is plural, meaning more than one. But that is the bone of a diplodocus. That's a healthy bone from a diplodocus. That's what it's supposed to look like. Now, here is the bone of a diplodocus. This is a diplodocus tailbone. But we have something weird going on here. Because we have two bones that are connected in the center. When you break a bone, your bone will try to heal itself. If you break an arm bone, the bone will try to grow back together again, not coming together this way, but instead at the end of each side, the bone starts growing like crazy. And it grows like crazy until it forms a little bridge and reconnects the bones back together. If you've ever broken your arm or your leg or any bone, doctors usually put it in a cast. They put it in a cast, not to help it grow back, but to help it grow straight. You see, if you broke it, it'll grow back together. The bone will grow between the two, but you'll always have a crooked arm. You'll always have a crooked leg. Well, this dinosaur broke its tail. I don't know how, but it did. And broke these two vertebrae. So all that, all that bone began to grow like crazy to try to fix the bridge between the two because they were now broken. And it got this, oh, I'm sorry. It got this real lumpy looking thing on it. So these are signs of healthy vertebra. This is the sign of a broken vertebra. Well, there's other bones that we find that are broken and healed. For instance, that is the toe bone of a triceratops. This is a toe bone from a triceratops, but it looks way, way different. See how smooth and clean that bone looks? Don't pay attention to the color. The color of the fossil is determined by the color of the dirt. But look at the look at the texture of the bone. That's the healthy bone. Here's the bone I'm holding in my hand. This is an example of an infection. When you get a cut on your hands and your mom tells you to keep it clean and wash it, that's to prevent a bacterial infection. Now, Today, we're all dealing with a virus. A virus is different from bacteria. Bacteria go in and kind of start to eat away the bone and all the flesh. A virus usually attacks our other systems, our circulatory systems and our breathing. Well, here's an example of a toe bone from a very sick little triceratops that had an infected foot. We can find that in the fossil record. Now, this one's not going to make sense because I don't have a picture of a, what a healthy one looks like. This is the toe bone of a stegosaurus. This is found in Utah. This is the toe bone of a stegosaurus. Again, you see all of the strange bumpy shape. It should have been smooth like the, um, like the bone I showed you there. It doesn't look exactly the same, but it should have been smooth. But all of these little marks are all marks where something had been, uh, where an infection occurred. Now, we also find fossils 
that uh, that show things like, like I said, bite marks, claw marks. All of that stuff can be found. Let's talk about bite marks here. Now, this is a Tyrannosaurus Rex toe that was bitten into it by a very powerful tooth. In fact, the close-up you see is the very tip of the tooth that bit into this. Now, closer inspection told us that that was a Tyrannosaurus Rex that attacked another one. T-Rexes attack other T-Rexes. So here's an example of a toe bone that was being chewed on by another T-Rex. And speaking of our friend T-Rex, they even found a Triceratops backbone vertebra with teeth marks that fit the teeth of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. So like scientists or like uh, investigators do today, like investigators do today, they use the clues around them including the skeletons, the location, all of the clues they can find to help them figure out. So for instance, with that Triceratops vertebra I just showed you, first they found the Triceratops. So they immediately knew what time period it lived in, and they immediately recognized that on that one bone, there was something there that didn't belong. You can tell the difference between a healthy bone and a bad bone by looking at it. So when they found that vertebra and scientists saw those holes, then like investigators, they had to say, okay, Triceratops lived in the Cretaceous. Triceratops would have been hunted by animals that lived with it. So what was a list of the meat eaters that lived with Triceratops? Albertosaurus, Despletosaurus, Dromaeosaurus, Tyrannosaurus, all of those dinosaurs lived at the same time in the same locations. So they had a list of suspects. What's the next step? Look at the hole in the bone and look at the shape. Now, if the tooth mark was a thin, skinny line, that would probably rule out Tyrannosaurus rex because he has round teeth. You couldn't now, this tooth could make that mark. This is from a dinosaur named Carcharodontosaurus. He lived in Africa. He didn't live there. Couldn't have been Carcharodontosaurus. Could it have been a raptor tooth? Well, the bite would have to be tiny. And would a raptor be strong enough to bite into the bone of an animal without breaking all of his teeth off? You've got to be, have very strong teeth. So scientists said, okay. Don't think it could have been a raptor. Let's take him out. We know it couldn't be a couldn't be Carcharodontosaurus because his tooth shape is different and he doesn't live at the right time. Could it have been Despletosaurus? Maybe, but his teeth are more thin. Could it have been Albertosaurus? Maybe, but his teeth are even thinner. Could it been? Could it have been Tyrannosaurus Rex? So that became the focus of the investigation, and then. By matching up the teeth of a Tyrannosaurus Rex to the vertebra, then we know that that vertebra was bitten by a Tyrannosaurus Rex who had a round tooth and was strong enough to bite through bone. Now, we find other injuries as well. These injuries are caused by other kinds of weapons. Now, first, let's talk about something called a defensive weapon. A defensive weapon is something an animal would use in order to protect itself from being attacked. Defensive weapons come in all different shapes and sizes. There's spikes from the tail of a Stegosaurus. There's a big round club from a dinosaur like Ankylosaurus. And of course, there are the horns of a dinosaur named Triceratops. Those are examples of defensive weapons. Sometimes we find dinosaur bones that have evidence that, a, that it was a defensive weapon. It's not always the meat eaters that leave marks on the bones. It can be plant eaters. And these are an example of some of the different plant eaters who could have left marks on the bone. And of course, other marks on the bones are found by offensive weapons. Offensive weapons are things like we talked about. Teeth, claws. Uh, the black claw is a hand claw from an Allosaurus. Small claw at the bottom is a killing claw from Velociraptor. 
And the medium-sized brown claw, that's a claw from Deinonychus. And then, of course, there are the teeth. And we looked at the different teeth, right? We looked at the different teeth and we talked about them, about some of the shapes and that kind of stuff. Thin teeth are made for slicing meat, but are not strong enough to break bone because the tooth tip would break. Big honking teeth like this. That's carnivore. Those are, those are part of an offensive weapon. And the, the difference between offensive and defensive, it's like this. Think of a football game. You have the offense and you have the defense, right? The defense is trying to stop the offense who's coming at them. So offensive weapons are used to come at you. Defensive weapons are used to stop you. Defense. <laughs> defense. I need to hold up that little sign with a D and then a fence. Okay, what were we talking about? So, <laughs> paleontologists use all of the technology today to help them figure out, is there, a, is there a mark on the bone? Who is the animal the bone belongs to? When did it live? Where did it live? And then who made the mark? So, taking all of that stuff into consideration, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for us to solve a mystery. Put on your crime solving gear, my friends, because it is time for us to look at a piece of evidence to find out what happened to this animal. Here we go, here's our evidence. Here's our victim. It is Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now this is not a full grown Tyrannosaurus Rex because I couldn't pick up a full grown Tyrannosaurus Rex skull. So I'm using this model of what a little baby looked at. Now this is the back of the skull. Here's his nose, head, back of the skull. Okay, see that little round thing right there? That little round thing is called the occipital condyle. Occipital condyle, that's where the neck connects. The reason why it's round, the little neck vertebra connected so that when he walked around, he could move his head. See, if it was if it was not round, he couldn't move his head up and down. So that's called the occipital condyle. All right, get ready. Because you're probably going to hear me scream when I pick this thing up. All right, I'm going to show you the actual back of the skull of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Take a deep breath, everybody. Here we go. Okay. See that round ball right there? That's the occipital condyle of a grown-up. This is the back of the skull of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. And here is our mystery. You guys cannot imagine how heavy this thing is. All right. Remember I showed you. Look, this is what the skull of the top of the head should look like. And look at this side. It's missing something and there is a hole right here. Something made a hole. Now, the shape used to be round, but it's not round anymore because bone began to heal. This is healed bone. This is the injury. Let me put it through this way. Okay? This part is healed bone. So something made a hole in the back, at the top of the skull of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I've got to put this down, you guys. By the way, his brain <laughs> would have been in there somewhere. Oh! Ah, hang on. I'll be back. Thing weighed a ton. So the um, the skull piece that I just showed you should have been nice and round like that side. But there was a hole right there. So we've got to figure out how exactly we are going to solve a mystery. Well, first of all, we know who our victim is. 
Our victim is a Tyrannosaurus Rex. That piece has been solved because we can identify the bone. So now it's time to look at the facts of the crime. First, the animal lived in the Cretaceous. That's when Tyrannosaurus Rex lived. So our first clue in figuring out who caused that injury, they had to have lived during the Cretaceous period. Next, because of the shape of the hole, we know that the attack came from the top down. The hole was made from the top down. Now that does not mean that it had to be taller than T-Rex. What if T-Rex was on the ground, right? What if T-Rex was on the ground? Keep that in mind. Just because something, just because there's a hole up here doesn't mean something was taller than you. You could be laying on the ground, right? So we know that it lived in the Cretaceous. We know that the attack came from above. Next, we know that the injury is round. So we know what shape caused it. And finally, we know that it began to heal. So let's take a look at some of the things that could have made that injury. I don't know if I can pick this up again, but I'm going to try because I got to demonstrate. Hang on. This might go down as the minute you see me collapse and scream in pain. All right. Ah! <laughs> Woo All right. I'm going to have to lean it on my lap. I hope you can see it. There's the injury. Okay. So let's talk about some of the defensive weapons we learned about. Let's start with. Ta-da! Stegosaurus. Here is the tail spike of a stegosaurus. It's kind of round, but it's sort of flattened. Could a stegosaurus tail spike have made that injury? I can tell you the whole kind of sort of lines up with it. By the way, when this dinosaur was alive, this would have been covered with something called keratin. Keratin is what your fingernails are made of, and it covered the bones and made them, made this, uh, it covered the spike and made it longer and sharper. Now, if the keratin end was broken off, it would be like your fingernail, it would grow back. If they broke the bone, that wouldn't grow back. So, this seems to be the right shape. Now, the question, all right, I simply cannot hold this anymore. It's crushing my legs. Hang on. Okay. So, the shape seems about right. What about, could that tail have been used to make a hole in the top of T-Rex's head? Maybe. Like I said, what if T-Rex was laying on the ground? So, could it have been Stegosaurus? When did Stegosaurus live? Did he live in the Cretaceous period? With T-Rex? I don't know. You figure it out. Next, who else could have made it? Whoa. What about Triceratops? What about Triceratops? Here is the horn of a little Triceratops. This is sort of a baby. Certainly has the right shape. Now the keratin covering would have made it longer and sharper. Could have Triceratops have stuck the horn from the top down, even though Tyrannosaurus Rex could have been laying on the ground, the injury was still caused by something going down, not straight. Could Triceratops turn its body enough so that the horn went this way? I don't know. Did Triceratops live at the time of, of Tyrannosaurus Rex? I don't know. You figure it out. So if Triceratops did it, how then could that hole have come from the top down? Let's look at one last clue because we're almost out of time. Class is almost over. Let's look at a couple of other things we talked about. Uh, could a claw have made that? I don't know. That's a round hole. Could a 
tooth that I showed you have made that? I don't know. So here is your homework. Figure out who could have done it and who lived with Tyrannosaurus Rex. Give me a list of animals that lived with Tyrannosaurus Rex and then tell me whether they may or may not have done it. You can pick as many as you want. One, two, three, or four, doesn't matter. Then figure out um, who from your list could have done it. Was it Triceratops with a horn? Was it a Stegosaurus with a spike? Was it an Ankylosaurus with one of its spikes on its body? Was it Dilophosaurus? Was it Spinosaurus? Did any of those animals live together and could they have done it? Was it Colonel Mustard in the library with a candlestick? <laughs> all right, your parents are laughing right now. You kids don't get that at all, but you will. That was hilarious. Michelle and Alexis, write that down. Second funniest thing I've ever said in my entire life. So those are the things I want you to do is I want you to figure out who could have done it. And when you do it, I want you to post your answers on the Dinosaur George Jr. page. But I, want, I don't want you to just say who did it. I want you to say, um, I want you to say, thank you, Sarah, for laughing. I want you to say, <laughs> I want you to say, here is a list of who might have done it. Here's why I think this one did it. And here's why I don't think these did it. And that will be your project for the day. I hope you guys enjoyed this class. I hope you in, had a good time. And let's keep in mind again, real quick, let me touch on the announcements again. Here is your schedule for the upcoming classes on April 7th, April 10th, and April 14th, 2020. All of them starting at 10 a.m. Central Time. And also keep in, keep in mind, everything on our gift shop is on sale for 15% off, but you have to enter that code. You have to enter Dino George uh, code to be able to get it. And now with that, class is dismissed.